Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using basic inline styling in CSS. Inline styles are a type of CSS styling that you can use inside of your HTML tags. And this is sort of like the easiest way for you to start using styles in your HTML. Over here, I have this index.html file, and this file is also loaded up over here on the browser. So any changes that we make to this file, we'll be able to see over here on the browser. And this is a pretty basic file. We just have this header over here with an H1 in it. And then we have this main that has a paragraph in it. So pretty basic stuff. And I want to show you how you can start adding some styling. So you can use inline styling by coming here to any of the HTML tags that you want. So you pick the HTML tag that you want to apply some styling to and you go inside of these less than greater than signs and we can just type out style equals and then two quotation marks. And then inside of these quotation marks, we can type out the name of the CSS attribute that we want to style and then the value that we want to give that attribute. So in CSS, there's all sorts of different attributes that we can define about the HTML tags on our website. So you can define things like the color or the size or the position, or we can specify like how far away certain elements need to be from other elements. There's all of these CSS attributes that we can use. And inside of this style tag, we can put any of those attributes and we can assign them values. So I'm just going to show you one of the most basic CSS attributes, which is color and color is going to control the color of the text. So whenever you're working with colors, you can just sort of type in all of the common colors. So I could type in like blue, for example, and you can see how this is organized. So I have the attribute name that I want to modify. I have a semicolon or this is just a colon. And then I have the value that I want to give to this attribute. So in this case, I'm assigning the color of the text for anything inside this body tag to be blue. So now when I refresh this page, you'll see that both of these turn into blue text. Now what's happening here is we're applying some styling to this body tag and the style that we define up here is going to get inherited by all of the elements inside of the body. So anything that lives inside of that body tag, like this header, this header one, this main, this paragraph, all of these attributes are going to inherit the styling that we put on this body tag. You can also add more than one of these. So I could also add another one. And after this semicolon, I can just put a space and we can type out the next attribute that we wanted to find. Another really common one is controlling the size of the text. So I can use something called font size. It's just font hyphen size. And here we can put a unit of measurement. So in CSS, there's various ways that you can define how big or small something is. And these are called like units of measurement. And there's a bunch of different units that we can use. You can use things like inches or centimeters, but the most common by far is a pixel. So generally in CSS, when you're defining the size of something, you're going to define it using pixels. So I could say the font size is going to be 20 pixels. Now a pixel is a unit of measurement, but it's not directly mappable to any like normal unit of measurement, right? So if I say something is an inch or something is a centimeter, like you can picture a centimeter or an inch in your head, but unlike a centimeter or an inch, a pixel doesn't have like an absolute size. It's really going to be relative to the resolution on your screen. So whatever type of screen you're using, depending on the resolution of the screen, pixels are going to show up a little bit differently, but pixels are still the most commonly used unit of measurement inside of our CSS. And eventually you'll just get used to using pixels and you'll kind of be able to visualize what a certain amount of pixels is going to look like. So I'm defining the font size as 20 pixels. And now when I refresh the page, you'll notice that the text gets a little bit bigger. So we've actually increased the size of the font. So you can add as many of these CSS attributes inside of this style tag as you want. And there's hundreds of these different attributes. And these are just some of the most common ones. So another thing I can do is I can override some of this styling from inside of the tags that are in the body. So remember all of the style that I put on this body tag is going to get inherited by all of the tags that are inside the body, right? So this header is going to use all of this styling and this main is going to use all of this styling. But if I wanted to, I could actually override that. So if I wanted to come down here to this header one, Maybe I didn't want the header one to be blue. Maybe I want it to be a different color. 
I can just override that CSS style. So now I could say color red. And now what'll happen is the header is gonna be red. So this H1 is now red, but you'll notice that this paragraph stays blue because we didn't override anything in the paragraph. Now, in addition to defining like the color or the font size, we could also define like a background color. So let's say maybe here in this main, we wanted this to be a different background color. I could say background color, and we can make this maybe green. So now when I refresh the page, this paragraph is gonna have a background color associated to it. So this is just like basic ways that you can apply different styling to different tags. So whichever tag I want to put styling on, I can just include this style tag. And then inside of the quotation marks, you can put whatever style you want. I can also use some other attributes. So another one that we can do is we can put a border on something. So I'm gonna get rid of this background color and we're gonna define a border on this main. So I can say border and with a border, you're actually gonna include three different values. So up here, when we were working with these colors, we only included one value, but when we're doing borders, we wanna include three values. And there are certain CSS attributes that are gonna take more than one value. In a border, we wanna define the first thing is the width of the border, so like the thickness. The second thing we wanna define is the style of the border. So you can do like solid, and this will just give us a solid border. And then we wanted to define the color of the border. So let's just make it black. And over here, you'll see that this green background should disappear and we should get a black border. And that's exactly what we got. So we have this black border and it's surrounding this paragraph. The black border is actually surrounding the main tag as well. In addition to having a border like this, we can also define sizes of our elements. So if I wanted to, let's say, resize this whole main block, I could do that. So I can come down here in the styling and we'll give this another style and I'm just gonna call it width. So you can actually define width or you can define height. In our case, we'll define width and let's make it 100 pixels. So you'll see when I refresh this page that this box should shrink down to 100 pixels and it does. So instead of being the full width of the browser screen, now this box is only 100 pixels. So if I was to resize this screen, this box is gonna stay the same width. If I got rid of this width though, then this box is just gonna be the entire length of the screen. So as I resize the screen, you can see the box just fills up the whole area that, I, that it has available to it. So we can define something like width, and in addition to using like pixels, we could also use percentages. So instead of saying 100 pixels, I could say 100%. And 100% will mean that the width of this main container will be 100% of the screen size. So I could also do, instead of 100, we can use 80. And so now this box is gonna take up 80% of the screen. And you can see that it does. So as much as I resize this, it's only ever gonna take up 80% of the browser window. And it, you know, it, I can resize it all day and it'll still only take up 80% of the screen. You can also define a maximum width. So if I'm using something like width 80%, in combination with that, I could define a max width. And this will basically specify like the maximum that this width can get. So it'll be 80% of the screen until it hits this certain width and then it'll stay at that width. So why don't we say 500 pixels? So now when I refresh the page, you'll see that it's 80%, but we're gonna get to a certain point where this is gonna reach 500 pixels and it's gonna stop resizing. So it was right there and you can see right here it stops getting bigger because it's at 500 pixels and so now it's reached the maximum width that it can go and it'll stop growing so in addition to using width we could also just replace these with height and it would be the same thing so we could have the same effect so these are just some basic styles that you'll find yourself using a lot and remember whenever you want to use one of these styles inside of your html you can just go to the tag that you want to style so for example this main tag and you just type out style equals and then these quotation marks and then inside you can define the attribute and then you can give the attribute a value and some attributes like this color are going to take one value and other attributes like this border are going to take three or two or you know a variable number of attributes so hopefully now you have a grasp of how you can start styling your html pages now I wanna show you guys a website and I'm over here at this website, it's called w3schools.com and it's just w3schools.com forward slash CSS ref. And this is a website that you can go to to find a bunch of information about all of these CSS attributes. 
So remember, I was defining certain attributes like color, background color, width, height, font size, but there's hundreds of these different CSS attributes. And you can see over here, this CSS properties table, it's listing out all of these different attributes. I mean, there's so many that you can use. So one thing that you always wanna keep in mind is that there's a bunch of these attributes and if you wanna do something in CSS, if you wanna style your pages a certain way, chances are there's a tag in here somewhere that's gonna help you. And so using this as a reference to kind of see which tags are available is gonna be an invaluable resource for you. Now, obviously, as we go through this course, I'm gonna expose you to most of the common CSS elements that you're gonna be using and the ones that you wanna use the most, but keep in mind that there's this huge reference here and you wanna use this as a resource. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.